So the level of water in a reservoir is going to vary over the course of a year or many years, uh, depending on the conditions that are uh, prevalent. Uh, if you have a drought period, you're going to see a depletion of the uh, amount of water in that reservoir. If you have some years with uh, great snowfall and precipitation, uh, then you're going to be running at capacity with excess water that you're going to have to release out. Uh, so it just kind of depends on the circumstances. And then, of course, there are seasonal components to this as well. So to figure out what the amount of stored water is through a period of time, we're basically just for that window is we're going to take a difference between how much water flowed into the reservoir in the form of rain or snow melt or whatever else and then what was taken out for the use in agriculture or domestic uh, um, capacity or industrial use or whatever so what's released and so for any given period of time we'll use a monthly uh, period uh, we can figure out what the net uh, um, inflow is in a given month by just subtracting those two quantities, the inflow minus the outflow. So in our first uh, month here in our table, uh, we can find that 2.36 minus 3.11. So we've got, uh, this is all in uh, billions of cubic feet. So 2.36 minus 3.11, we end up with a net inflow of negative uh, 0.75 billion cubic feet. So meaning in month one of our table here, we have uh, seen a uh, more consumed than flowed into our reservoir. And so then the other, uh, besides just on a monthly basis, we want to see over a period of time, what is that cumulative storage looking like or depletion if it ends up being negative. So through one month in this circumstance, we've got this exact same negative 0.75. That's all we have so far. Now to figure out what that cumulative storage is after many months, we're basically just going to be adding together all of those net uh, inflows, all of those uh, storage uh, periods, um, uh, delta M stored, uh, over a series of months. So that's what we have here in our table with uh, just six months worth of data. Generally, we would do this for a much longer term, uh, but uh, we don't want to get bogged down in too much data here for just an example. So again, to find what the net inflow in month two is, I'm just going to subtract what goes in minus what goes out. So again, we can see that we're negative, got negative 0.36 billion cubic feet. Now to figure out what the cumulative storage is, I'm going to take what has happened so far. So we've used this 0.75 billion cubic feet in the previous month, plus another negative 0.36. So now we're down to negative 1.1 billion cubic feet. So we've, over this two month period of time, we have drawn out 1.11 billion cubic feet more than what has flowed in. And so then we can just repeat this process throughout the rest of the table. Subtract the inflow minus the outflow, and then we get negative 1.71, and then we add that negative 1.71 to what has happened already. So now we're at negative 2.82 over this three month period of time. For month four, Point one, so we're doing a little bit better in this case. We've actually added water to the uh, reserv uh, reservoir, um, but still over this entire four-month period of time, we're still in the red, so to speak. Uh, and then we've got uh, one more flush month here, so we're a positive 1.29. More water came in than went out, so that improves us for our longer-range calculation. Cumulative storage is now down to negative 1.43 billion cubic feet, but then we have another negative month, negative 0.21, and so we've got this negative 1.64. So for this six-month period of time, we've used 1.64 billion cubic feet of water uh, from our reservoir. So we've drawn it down by that amount. So as I said, we would typically uh, perform the analysis that we did on the previous example over a much longer period of time, a number of years as opposed to just a six month period of time. Uh, over six months we're not even going to get through an entire cycle of a rainy and dry seasons, let alone multiple cycles, uh, to be able to really get a, a sense as to how much uh, water cumulatively is being stored. Um, so if we had more data, 
like what we're going to see in the uh, graph in front of us, then we can start to uh, really draw some conclusions as to what our reservoir capacity needs to be. So what we see in the graph in front of us is uh, the cumulative storage in a reservoir like what we calculated in the last example except for instead of it just being for a three month or six month period of time uh, like what we did we can see we're going out 1600 days so on the order of like about four years uh, a little over four years so uh, what we are then looking at is a graph of this cumulative storage so in this circumstance here which is not a graph of the data that we had before so in the early months we had an increase in the cumulative storage so we had a few months there of a uh, net inflow being higher than the outflow and so we end up at this peak here where our reservoir is at a highest uh, capacity level uh, here about looks like about a hundred days into our cycle and so then we end up in a period of where we're drawing down so now what was being taken from the reservoir on a monthly basis was more than what was being drawn in and so we can see that we have a series of uh, depletions and so eventually we end up uh, in the in the red we end up uh, negative just like what we saw at the end of the six months in the previous example so then we go back on the upswing so before we go back on the upswing again and, and start to see an increase in our cumulative storage the difference between this uh, peak and then the trough below it is going to be the maximum drawdown that we've experienced to this point. So pretending like the rest of this graph just doesn't exist yet. So at this point in our graph, I'll take away all the scribbles there, at this point this is the minimum amount that our reservoir needs to have. The difference between this peak and this trough from the maximum storage level to the maximum uh, to the minimum storage level that's the amount of water that our reservoir at minimum has to have to this point in our graph in order for us to not run dry in this reservoir, which is a big catastrophe. So what we have here in our table is our first peak is at approximately 2.51 billion cubic feet. If we look at our graph, uh, that looks about right. And then if we look at the minimum here at M1, so that's going to be approximately, it looks like, negative 3.95, just pulling that information off of our graph. And so I'm going to subtract the peak minus the minimum. And so when I subtract those two, we end up with 6.46 billion cubic feet. So that means that that is the minimum amount of water I need to have in my reservoir to not end up running dry somewhere uh, along the line. So then uh, once we get off of this minimum level we can see that we've got an increase in our storage and we end up uh, rising up to this peak here at p2 and so that's the number that we see here this 6.7 billion cubic feet so now like from the time that we started uh, monitoring this reservoir we start off at a baseline of zero we got to a peak of 2.51 billion cubic feet above that baseline we ended up at a trough of negative uh, 3.95 below that baseline. So now we've gone back up. Like I said, we've had a series of good months here, maybe a rainy season. And so now we get to peak two. So this is the next highest level before we start to draw down from our reservoir. So on a monthly basis, we've been increasing, increasing until we get to peak two, 6.7 billion cubic feet. And then again, we have another series of declines. So now that we've established a new peak, I'm then going to subtract the next minimum that comes after it. And so in our data set here, we see we reach another low point at M2. So again, we're pretending like the rest of this graph doesn't exist. We're just paying attention uh, as we go. So uh, that M2 is uh, at 0.59. We can see that from our graph. So I'm once again going to subtract from this new high water mark, no pun intended, at P2 minus the minimum that comes after it. And so when I subtract those, I get 6.11. So this peak to minimum difference is smaller than the first peak to minimum difference. So I've actually had a smaller drawdown from my reservoir than I did from that first peak to that 
uh, first minimum. So as of right now, this 6.46 is still holding up as my minimum required uh, volume of water in my reservoir in order for me to not run dry. So uh, now we again end up with another set of positive months. And so we establish a new high water mark uh, at P3. And so that's recorded here at this 9.44. So then we have a series of dry months. And so again, if this rest of the data didn't exist, then we'd have this M3 right here, and then we would subtract P3 minus M3 to figure out what that uh, drawdown was. And I think we can pretty clearly see that that would be less than what we had. So if our data stopped there, then we'd know that we'd have this minimum capacity necessary here of 6.46 billion cubic feet but we do actually have some more information. And so the more information that we have is we end up bottoming out, but then we have a few positive months. Now we establish a peak here, but it's not higher than the peak at P3. So I'm going to disregard that. I'm not even going to record that in my table. And so then we have this long period of drawdown, combination of dry season, maybe some drought, and so then we establish this trough before we start to go back up again. So my next drawdown period is not from this unlabeled peak here, but it's from this P3. And so even though I've had a drawdown and a bounce back up, I ultimately ended up from this high point at P3 down to this low point is at M3, which is this negative 2.27 that is my largest drawdown. And so I always take the highest peak minus the lowest low that comes after it. And so I only establish a new peak if it's higher than any previous peak. So that's why this one's out. It's not included in our calculation because it didn't surpass the one that's at P3. So the bottom line is I'm going to take the highest peak minus the lowest low that comes after it and so here we end up with 11.71 if we subtract those. So this now is my largest drawdown period. So even though in the interim between that P3 and that M3, we had a little bit of a rebound, ultimately the net drawdown from the highest high to the lowest low that follows it is this 11.71 billion cubic feet. And so that now is the new established amount of water that we have to have in our reservoir for us to not end up depleting it and running dry. So this is called sequent peak analysis, where we start from some baseline, and then we just record what our monthly inflow uh, cumulative storage is. So once we establish a peak, like we did at P1 right here, then we take the, the lowest minimum that follows it, subtract those, and that starts off as our minimum capacity. Then if we establish a new high water mark, that now becomes our new peak that we're going to use to subtract the lowest low that comes after it. And so here from P2 to M2, we did that calculation. Then we established a new peak at P3. And then, yes, we had this one here, but we disregarded it because it wasn't higher than any previous peak that came before it. We have only count a new peak, a peak as a new peak if it's higher than what came before. And so we go all the way down to the lowest low after that newly established highest high, and then we subtract those, and whatever that biggest gap is between peak and trough that comes after it, that tells us what our minimum required storage is for a reservoir to avoid depletion.